Friends, Gerard Scarpacy here, live from New York City. I'm the co-founder of Hairbrained, and today I'm very excited to have my good friend, Mr. Joel Torres, who's a creative director at TG. So you know that means there's going to be some incredible hair cutting. This is his beautiful model, Vimala. Hi. And you can see she's got incredible, incredible <laughs> color here. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a minute as well. But let's really get into the haircut. I'm excited because he's already started razor cutting the undercut. And uh, this razor is like a, a traditional Tony and Guy razor, um, and I'm always excited to see people work with it. So, Joel, tell us what you got going on. Yeah, well, first, thank you for having me here. I'm really excited to be here and sharing some knowledge and techniques with the hair brain community. Uh, so, what, what, what we're going to be working with my model today is an undercut slash micro shack um, haircut. So, I know that that's kind of a lot of information, but you see because it's pretty exciting. So what I'm going to be working It's is, like you took all the best trendy yes. words and put them into one haircut. It's an undercut and a microchip. In a blender, in a blender, yeah, everything and together. A hybrid. <laughs> it's a hybrid. So just working, uh, first working with my horse section, going a little lower on the crown area, just to maintain more distance, and it's going to be better for my transition from the underneath all the way to the top. And working with my racer, like Gerard said, taking diagonal back section, having control with my body position, and then cutting 90 degrees elevation and distribution. And from there, I'm gonna be traveling with my guy all the way back, and then going in the opposite side. Of course, changing my body position and my hands position. I'm always using products, so for this, I'm using the multitasking styling cream from TG Copyright. This allows me to wear really comfortable in every single section, and also give me the grip to have that control on my finger. So really excited to be working with that technique. So guys, if you're just joining us, I'm Gerard Scarpacy, craft hairdresser and co-founder of Hairbrained. Excited to be working with my good friend, Joel Torres. Joel, I think is one of the best hair cutters out there. I know you guys know him from Instagram, all the great videos that he does, all the incredible classes that he's doing for TG around the world. This is his beautiful model, Vimala. Vimala. I keep getting yeah. that wrong. It's like Vimala, Vimala, Vimala. What a great name. What's Thank the background you. of that name? It's Sanskrit. It means pure. Okay. Well, there you go. Vimala. And jo Joel's working on a razor undercut here. There's been a couple questions. Um, our good friend Steve Stantland, he read the description. He goes, does that mean like Jane Fonda and Clute meet Ziggy Stardust? Wow, all that together. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, right on. Great to have you, Steve. Rick Jaramillo is watching. Hello from Houston. I know you're living in Texas these days. Am I right, Joel? Yes, I mean Dallas. Yeah. So some love coming from Blanca Stella in Houston. So guys, if you have questions, you've got an, a, an amazing educator here in Joel. I know he wants to share with you. He's getting started on his razor undercut. So tell us a little bit of tips about working with this tool in particular. So one of the things I liked about the, um, working with a razor is that nothing gives you a more natural feeling than a razor cut, right? So actually my uh, technique is with long strokes and short ones. So I create different lengths inside. Those short pieces is going to give me the support and the long pieces is going to give me the natural feeling to the hair. And you can actually work really fast with, um, with the razor. So you guys know I really love razor cutting, so I want to make sure I have a good close up here of what's happening. So you're changing the stroke, like as you go down? Yes, so yes. So when do you know when to change it? Is it just like kind of on a rhythm, like short, 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 long, long, long? Very random, but... Very random. Always making sure that the density in that area is the perfect to go stronger on the technique, right? If you don't have a lot of hair, then go soft. But if you have a lot of hair, then you can be a little more stronger on the pressure, so then you can balance everything depends on the density of the hair. Right here, I know that I'm going lower, so my elevation is gonna be a little higher because I wanna maintain the length, and then I go a little softer. So I change to the fine set of the, con of the razor just to have control in that area, so I don't make that really wispy. I think that is super important. So we've got great friends tuning in from all over. We've got Milo Maximovic, she's a good friend of ours. Uh, Pascal Gianello from Old School Sassoon is watching. Love to have all these great people. My buddy, Rick Jaramillo. I'd love to hear about the venue in LA, Rick. Uh, you know, we're always looking to do great events and we've got something coming up in LA in June. So check that out. Bianca Stellar is wondering about the name of the razor. This is the TG razor? Yeah, it's a TG razor. I think we still have a few. This one is almost like, uh, I think it's like 15 years old. 
So if you see this razor is pretty cool, you can open and you can change the blade inside. This is like a classic Tony and Guy razor. Yes. Are people still using them a lot in the in the TG Tony and Guy world or? I believe so they use yeah. it because every time I'm in classes, Me too, always I'm somebody bring in. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yesterday I saw one that is, uh, I think, more than 20 years ago. So Every time really I teach a razor one. class, somebody has one so you can see how much of a mark that made. All right, so I want to give some more love. Our buddy Hector Rodriguez is watching. Our good buddy DJ Riggs. Hey, DJ. TG alumni. <laughs> you know, we were talking about it earlier, uh, Joel and I, how many great hairdressers have come through that TG kind of training program. You were just mentioning you met up with some great hairdressers that you, know, you didn't even know came from TG. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Every time, I think now people, because of social media, know or recognize me as part of the, the team. So people come to me and say, hey, you know that my background is actually uh, TG or the Tony Engard Academy in New York or in California. So it's, it's nice to know people's background. And yeah, it's, it's just amazing that legacy of learning and education and sharing and that you guys are still doing it. All right, so you're making your way around the undercut. The sections are kind of what you call, are they diagonal back? Diagonal back section, always traveling with my guys. So every time I take a new section, I measure with the previous section, and that's gonna be my reference to continue with my technique. 90 degrees, slightly over directed on the back, just to maintain the length on that area. That's gonna give me also like a molity kind of feeling to the hair. So that's uh, kind of the shag part that you're gonna have that extra length on the bottom. Yes. Okay, so we did have a, um, a question coming in from, well, it's more of a comment, which I think is great. I love to hear it. This is the way I learned razor cutting back in 1963 wow. from Tom Wood. He said, and then scissors took over in 68. <laughs> well, you know, I'd love to say that the razor is, is definitely making a big comeback and we're seeing some great razor cutting happening right here. I think it's the perfect timing for it because the hair now is a lot of texture, a lot of movement, and nothing gives you better movement than the razor for that. If so, I don't have the razor, I still can get something similar right. with the sliding technique but it's gonna give you a lot of um, hard work. What about people out there who are maybe, again, have never been trained with the razor and they're maybe afraid of it? Can you give them some tips? I, I noticed the hair is damp, you put a little product in, is that important for you? Yes, definitely. Well, if you see the hair is damp, I put a product, so that gives me cleanness in my work and control, so that's first. And then second, of course, the blade is gonna slide better on hair like this. So can you do it on dry hair? Yes, you have to be extremely sharp so you don't create any friction or split in. But um, I prefer personally damp hair because of the control. Excellent. Uh, there was a couple, someone asked if this was uh, natural color. What, what do you think? Yeah. It's not a natural color. It's a beautifully unnatural <laughs> color. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the color? Of course, so first shout out to my friend, Brian Adelman from the TG Academy in New York. He was using TG copyright color for this. So on pre-lined hair, he uh, toned the hair with this beautiful gray that you see right here. And then- And again, guys, just being in person, <laughs> I'm just astounded by how beautiful and even that gray is. I was looking through it before. Sometimes it's hard. You can see it on here, but in person, I, my mind is blown. So that's an incredible yes. color. From roots to end, you see that beautiful grayish color. And then with a the little pieces of pink inside, so that's gonna give us a little bit of uh, urban feeling to something that is kind of fun and commercial at the same time, so. So where do you stop with this? If you're starting in the front and working diagonal, do you work all the way across the other side? So or? this is what I do. Um, so as soon as I, I touch right the center of the crown area, all the way, to, yes, let's do this. So all the way from the center to this corner, and then from here, I'm gonna change my technique and work, changing my hands and body position. And then I'm gonna repeat the same technology, yeah. I mean the same methodology in the opposite side until I reach the opposite area. I find that a pretty common question because so many people are not used to working with diagonal sections. And I, honestly, I've, and maybe you've heard it before, they get to the back and they're like, when do I stop? Yes. So that's a great explanation, thank you. Now guys, if you have other technical questions, 
Joel's a great educator, and I know he'd love to share on any topic. We did have a big picture question from Jeremy Hickson. What's up, Jeremy? Always a pleasure. Hey, I got Jeremy. my blazer on today for you. Yeah, looking good. Uh, Jeremy says he's got a new apprentice, and he's wondering, what advice would you give to a new stylist, Joel? Well, first, a lot of practice. You know, nothing gets better with practice. So practice is extremely important. Right now, I'm going to get quiet for one second. I'm going to check my balance. Okay. So practice. You know, I have in my house so many different mannequins because I always practice. You never get tired of practice. practice you can just ask perfection. Kelly about mannequins. I have a whole wall full, and she's always like, can't we throw that one out? Can't I get attached to them. I'm like, no. Yes. I made such a discovery on that one. She's like, can we throw it out now? And when they go bald, I use it for... Wigs. Planters. No, you yeah, wigs. wigs or Halloween. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend in Hawaii. She cuts the top of the head off and she puts plants inside. Uh, so you got some love coming in and a question from Jorge Perez. He wants to know if you're coming to Puerto Rico to teach soon. And he says hi from Carolina. Carolina. Yes, Carolina. That's uh, my friend Jorge. Uh, he's a guy who started the journey with us many years ago. And um, he's an educator right now. So... Hello, my friend. Yes, I'm going. I'm born and raised in Puerto Rico, so I'm going back to the island because I like to give to the community. And if I can do something to help people follow their dream with knowledge and inspiration, of course. So I'm planning to go in July. So All right, there. awesome. So it brings a question to mind for me because, you know, people are always like, oh, you have to come from a big city to get successful as a hairdresser. And although Puerto Rico is a beautiful island, it's, it's not necessarily considered like a big metropolis, you know? No, How not. did you start your career there and end up at the pinnacle you are now? Like, what were the steps there? It's funny because I was talking about this um, story in the podcast a couple of days ago with Gordon. So, yeah, and, and it's always fun to talk about it. So I was in the uh, New York IBS show, and I saw um, the people from... TG working on stage, and I don't know, I connected, I said, I want to be just like that. So I went back to the island and found the distributor, and I said, hey, listen, I don't have any money to pay for my trainings, because, you know, it was really expensive, but I really want to help, I want to be around, so I can clean the room after, but just let me take the trainings, and I can pay you in a different way. So that's how I started with TG. I mean, just that, from let's, the just, let's just start there, that's... So show so much dedication. You know, you you were willing to like give your time and do whatever needed to be done. It's not about money; it's about investing your time and energy. So you literally said, "I'll I'll clean up this place for free if you let me hang out and learn." Yeah, and, and you know what? Did, That's good on them to take to say, "You know what? Okay, I'm, I'm sure those so, people are still dear to you." I'm so thankful to them, and you know, today we still have communication. And every time I see them, it's like you know, thank you for that opportunity to change my life. And from there, they gave me a couple of VHS. I was in my house just watching the collection over and over again. It was much harder in those days to rewind and fast forward, right? Yeah. When you missed the part and you were like, wait, how did he take that section? And then you'd have to rewind it yes. and fast forward it. Guys, if you're just joining us, I'm Gerard Scarpacy. We're in New York here at our home studio, Blonde Studio. We're working with the incredibly talented Mr. Joel Torres, who I'm proud to say has been kind of part of the harebrained community in a big way almost from day one i think you were like one of the first hundred or two hundred members 2013 or something. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. A long time of contributing and sharing and you know someone that we've always respected because he he's a craft hairdresser without a doubt and what does that mean it means he's into the work with his hands he's always trying to get better at it and we can see that here so let's get back into this razor cutting uh, just tell us everything that's going through your head and recap on, on the approach. Yeah, so right now I'm working in the opposite side, so changing my body position and my hands position. If you see, my thumb is giving me the direction where I'm going, and everything is 90 degrees, so it's really comfortable for me working this way. And if you see, I have long pieces that I created uh, just because that's the feeling I want to have on the hair. Working with my strokes, so 90 degrees, working with long and short, so then I can create different length, and that's gonna give us a, a really nice and clean, natural feeling to the hair. I love that idea of varying the stroke. I mean, uh, it's something I do a lot horizontally when I'm trying to create kind of graduation. I, I can't say that I've thought much about it working more diagonally like this, so that's awesome. 
Who's the best learner in the world? Me. I get to hang out with all these great people and pick up these tips. So I can't wait to try that. Guys, if you have any questions for Joel, please just go ahead and type them here. I'm looking for questions constantly and looking to give shout outs. Let us know where you're watching from. We also like to see who's watching from furthest away. Yes, that's awesome. That's exciting. Just finishing. And if you see, that's exactly what I wanted. To have that beautiful tailored nape. It's going to be more narrow to the... Um, below the occipital bone. So it looks feminine and nice. And now I'm gonna start working with my technique on the top. So on the top, I'm gonna to change. Instead of working with the razor, I'm gonna combine with the scissors. Because I'm a craft dresser. Awesome, so again, if you're just joining us, Joelle did the undercut using the razor. Really head hugging, but kept that disconnection. So it does have that little David Bowie-esque kind of flare on the bottom. Oh yes. <laughs> yep. This is beautiful model, Vimala. Hi. I got it right that time. It's yeah. the third time's a charm. Yes. <laughs> and has, has Joel cut your hair before? No, this is the first time. This is the first time. Yeah. Nice. You said he's styled it before. One time. And you're kind of like a house model in the TG world. They, yep. they use you all the time. Great. Four you can years. see why. Beautiful face and lovely hair. And have you worn these kind of colors a lot? This like this color is just fantastic. Is this something you've been doing? I'm a color chameleon. <laughs> a color chameleon. Well, yeah. your hair is still staying so healthy. Thank you. That's incredible. Obviously, getting great haircuts and yeah. using great TG products. That's to because it. of Brian, for sure. So, is that who? Who is it that's doing your color these days? Brian Adelman does mostly my color. Um, Shout out. Cree lightens and then does the creative color on top. Yeah. Thanks for the beautiful color, Brian. We have to get you on a, on an episode real soon too. Uh, the hair was definitely pre lightened. Some people were asking. Joel, do you know what they use to pre lighten Is there a specific TG? Yeah, the TG True Light. True Light um, is, is the bleach that we use, and it's amazing. You know? And he's really good taking care of that. I think he's the master of the bleach. So he did an amazing job pre lining um, the hair. And then that was yesterday, and then this morning before he came here, we did the toner, so it's pretty uh, cool. Joel, Blaine Hall is wondering what products you're using in the hair for cutting. Is it just water, or are you using product? Water, and I'm using the TG multitasking styling cream. Uh, that's perfect for, you know, give us a little bit of a grip and control to the sectioning. I'm gonna to move to this side. And like you see, the hair is not getting dry at all. So just maintaining the moisture on the hair so I don't have to re-wet it while I'm processing or doing my cut. I might have to grab some of this for me, you know, because uh, I would love to get something that keeps the hair consistently damp like this. And you can tell how the smooth the cuticle is, which makes it great for razoring. You don't have any roughness to it uh, and on the underneath when you're razoring. But now on the top, you're switching to the scissor. Why, why the change? Well, I think it's, well, first for me, it is going to be more comfortable working with something a little more solid on the fringe. Mm. That's where I'm going to be working with the um, Chuck Inspire kind of look. So I want more uh, precision here, and the scissor is going to give me that. So what I'm going to do is, it's something that I do with long chucks, mid chucks, and also this micro chuck. So I'm going to be working all my section to one side and then to the opposite side, and I'm going to check the length. Um, that is concave the way I want it. But if I want a little more softness, then I'm going with an elevation and then over direct everything to the center. That way I can create concave layer and it's gonna be shorter in the center and a little longer on the side, which is what is gonna be the best for chucks because it open up really nice um, on the face. So this is kind of like the bang of the moment. So guys, you really it wanna is. pay attention. Really break everything down for us here. Because I know everyone wants to learn this. Right now I'm cutting this. This is going to be my reference for my fringe. It's going to be a, like a long fringe, not that short. So I'm going with point cut. Right? And if you see my body position and my hands position, you know, that's going to so, give me the reference for the length. And from there, over directing the corners, always pushing or pulling the hair to your heart. Because that way you have more control than pushing away from your heart. So coming towards yourself, yes, and rather than away from yourself, and everything's just right into the center, or is it a little bit even past the center? It's all the way to the center. All the way to the side, unless you want a little asymmetry on the hair. Sure, which is a, is a never a bad thing, right? A little asymmetry. Never. I mean, one of the things I always loved about TG was just that, even though the balance was perfect, it was never about like perfect lines, and you know, it's like soft balance, which I think really kind of revolutionized hair cutting. At least it did for me. You know, I remember in the, in the mid-90s when I started to see that, you know, hair, 
it could be cut perfectly geometrically, but it could also be cut imperfectly geometrically, you know, because there's still so much technique here. Talk Definitely. a little bit about point cutting, because I think people take it for granted, but it's a real art. So any tips you can give on how to angle the scissor when you point cut, how deep to go. I think sometimes people just go on automatic pilot and they point cut, but it can give so many different um, effects. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to talk about that because I'm going to work on my section on the top. So starting working with my center profile part or section, and then actually I'm not going to connect anything from the fringe. I want a disconnection on that area but I want some short layer and long layers just to create more softness and movement on the top. So this is gonna be solid, there's gonna be a lot of movement, and there's gonna be a lot of movement on the top. So working my point cut, oh, we got a great shot and there, this is yeah. gonna be deep and a little aggressive because that's gonna give me the separation for the entire hair. So that way I'm cutting and personalizing at the same time. And it almost makes like what you just did is like mini concaves. Yes. So when that hair falls over, it's got so much more movement. And something else, right now no, because I'm in the middle or in the center. So I create those layers like that. But if I want to create some direction, then I choose my technique. The short pieces is going to be pushing the long one. So if I'm working a section, for example, here, I point the hair out just to push it out, or I just go to the opposite side if I want to push it out, because the short pieces pushes the long one. So we can create direction, or if you want to create a uh, random direction, then you go to both sides. That way you have movement to both sides. So this is obviously disconnected from the fringe or the front area. Mm -hmm. How do you know what length to cut it to, since there's not an exact guide? How do you choose the right length? I think... Right now I'm working with muscle memory, so I've been teaching the entire week, so I know the distance. <laughs> automatic pilot. Automatic pilot, yeah. Um, but if you want to have a better idea, then you just go up and choose the length from here, or if you want a disconnection a little uh, longer, or me that I'm working some shorter pieces than that. So basically muscle memory at this time, but you can follow that guideline. If you see that's a little piece from the, uh, from the fringe, so I'm not gonna cut that. I'd have to say for me, again, you know, as well as the point cutting and the freehand cutting, the concepts of disconnection, that everything didn't have to perfectly blend. That was something, you know, in the 90s that I started seeing from TG that really like shook me. I was like, oh man, something new and different is happening. And then yeah. you guys have just continued to keep it so sexy, which is something I wanna talk about too, because, you know, you're definitely a craft hairdresser, you have technique and precision. And I think sometimes people think the end result then is always going to be like solid and heavy and that can be quite beautiful, but everything you do is really much more commercially sexy, even when it's edgy. So what are your tips there for keeping it sexy? Well, how the trend is right now is more about people don't have time to, you know, fix their hair. So they want something more like wash and go type of style, something that is more wearable, easy to uh, create it at home. And the whole feeling of working with point cutting and softness and movement, yeah, this is a perfect timing for uh, this kind of technique, working with slicing, deep parallel point cut, uh, give, give you the, the softness for that. But there's always space for uh, something that is more uh, with precision, like a nothing better to have precision in a ball, for example. Especially as a foundation, too. Do you still believe that... Uh, as a fundamental, when you're learning, you really need to learn like kind of core haircutting, clean haircutting. I think it's good to challenge yourself and, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes step back from being comfortable doing something that is more soft and go back to the roots and work with precision. So you can, that body position, your hands position has to be always perfect to create a perfect line. So I think it's important to have both. So lots of love coming in. Uh, Anella Cartmill says, yes, point cutting is life. Um, we had some love coming in from Rocco Ianello, Ianacello. Deborah Walter is wondering if you could share again, please, the formula for the gray tone. Uh, well, the formula we can put it later. I don't we'll post it. Really, yeah. yeah, the color was done by Brian Edelman at the TG Academy. Great colorist here. We'll be sure to post the formula later. Um, but it was definitely pre lightened. Uh, with what you say the product was? It was CG copyright color. Copyright color. And then toned, we've got a pink and a gray. And again, now getting into this incredible haircut.
Yeah, so what I'm doing right now is working with my center profile um, section and my guideline. And from there, what I'm doing is I'm over directing everything to the center. That's gonna give me shortness on the top, a little long pieces. It's those long pieces is gonna be following by the shape that is gonna be shorter in the center and a little longer. So just working with different length out of the hair. I know that this, uh, my model can rock anything that is short. She's a photographer and she's Now I now I finally yes. got it. <laughs> a question coming in from Anthony Ning. He's wondering why you use such long scissors. Well, this is actually a 6.5. So for you, it's not that long. Now I have another, uh, a little longer, but now I'm working with a 6.5 just because I want to be on the frame of the haircut. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like it because I can go a little deeper on my technique. A lot of the pointing is inside the hair, so you need a longer scissor. Yes. Yeah. But I was, uh, most of the time I use a 7. And for Charlie Bird, who was asking about the razor, this is a TG Hardcore razor. Um, I know that TG and Tony and Guy have always had variations of this razor. Yeah. And I'm sure they're probably still available anywhere where Hardcore is sold. Well, actually, Hardcore is the name uh, 20 years ago. Now it's just TG. Just TG. I think we migrated to a new name, but it's the same So that's one. a classic one. It's a classic. It's a true classic scissor. And Jorge Perez is wondering about the shears. Which shears are you using? This is uh, TG scissors. It's a... Uh, uh, we did a co-branding with uh, Misutani scissors. Great, so, nice Japanese yep. quality scissors. Yes. Amanda Robertson is wondering about online classes with you. I know you give tons of education on your Instagram platform, so if anybody wants to follow you there, plus any place else they can take online classes with you, which is something I'm going to talk about with you today because I want you to get you on our HB Live Academy wow, as well. Hey, can't yeah. wait for that. So, well, I create a few tutorials that I have on my Instagram, Joel Torres Style. I also have... Um, a YouTube channel, Joel Torres PR, but also you can go to uh, on Instagram TG Professionals and you can see the link to our TG Fuse, which is our new platform to share everything about social media and education, digital education. So we have a little bit, of, I think we have everything covered right now. I love how the shape just came together, boom, like that. You did your undercut, your little kind of fun mullety shaggy thing in the back. Then you did this big bang with the overdirection layered over the top. It's one of the things I've always loved about TG, how you guys can make such cool hair, but in such an easy way. It's never overly complicated, yeah. which, and I mean that in a good way. Like, because if you're working in a salon and you want to make people look current and trendy, but yeah. if it's overly complicated, you can get lost, you can get confused, and it can take too long, where I love how you guys eliminate all the unnecessary steps. It's yes. like kind of part of the approach. Exactly. Well, we, when we talk about haircuts, we talk about four different steps. So, uh, in those four steps, it gives uh, you a better understanding on everything, right? So, that is in section distribution, elevation, and how we cut hair. So, we keep it really simple. And I do clients. I do clients in Dallas. I do clients in Miami, in assembly salon. And when I go there, I do my clients, and it's the same approach. Very simple. It's more like... It's, it's more like I'm listening to classic music when I'm doing my record. So, long straw, creating something completely natural and wearable. Unless I need to do something with a lot of precision, then I don't even breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, who are some of your mentors? So, doing a beautiful, simple blow dry, did you add any more products? No, no. Okay. I'm actually using the same product that so, I prepped the hair with. Still just working with the multitasking styling cream from TG? Yes. Yeah. Who are some of your mentors? I know within your organization there, you must have had some incredible experiences. Who are some people who have really influenced you? Well, Anthony Mascolo, of course, right? I, I was imagining, yeah. And all the Mascolo brothers, but also at the New York Academy, I have Thomas Osborne. He's the um, creative director for um, TG in Americas. And there's yes, a few people, like everybody that works in the international creative team is amazing. Uh, yeah, all of them are my inspiration, but I found inspiration in so many different ways. Uh, mentors inside of TV. Inspiration is photography, architecture, everything else, everything that is in a form of art inspire me on a daily basis. And, you know, I, I know you're in town doing some classes at the TG Academy here in Soho. If people want to take those classes, 
what do they do? Do they have to have PG in the salon, or can they? Can anyone take them? Just in case anybody's really interested. No, to be honest with you, you can. Any person can go to the academy and have. Uh, they can book classes with us. That's going to be extremely easy. They don't have to use our products. That's great to hear. Sharing that education uh, before it's, we open. It, it's open, and uh, you can find online the TV Academy in New York, the TV show. That's going to be enough to find all that uh, information in the calendar. We have a lot of classes coming up. In fact, we have actually a the Color Summit that's going to be in the summer, and it's a bunch of classes for color. So a hair color summit here in New York this in summer in Soho. And we're going to have one day for just social media, so I'm going to be doing that part. Awesome, I hope I can attend. Yes. So I noticed you switched to the round brush. I can see why, but can you explain it a little bit? So you kind of rough dried with your hands, it was almost dry, yes. and then you just grab that brush? Just giving that little uh, movement to the side, so creating a little volume in the roots, and then working that movement all the way to the side. We I'm going to break later. Is this just to give that direction? So you're like engineering that hair in the direction you want it to go. Yeah, it's just like I'm... Um, and it works with the cut because it's shortest in the center and longest on the corners. Always, so you pre-shaped it with the cut. Always giving direction to the hair. It's so important because what's going to happen in the house, the clients can recreate the look so easy because you're creating the direction for them. Uh, Charlie Bird is wondering if you'll be at Orlando Premiere if you're doing any classes there. I don't know, because it's always on my birthday, but this ah. time I'm always there, but I don't know yet if I'm going to be there. Lots of love. Adrian says a deadly shag, which we <laughs> love. That, that sounds a little, little nerve-wracking. I don't, you know, if you know, if you're from the UK, a deadly shag might be a little scary. Right? <laughs> um, so TG, inspired from the 80s, says Blanca. And that's what we always say, everything comes back. So any techniques that you learned in the past, it's all always reciprocal. Again, working with Joel Torres, creative director with TG, um, someone I wanted to get into the studio for a while. We've been live on stage together at Teach-Ins, but this is our first time doing an HB Live. And we're working on getting Joel to do a, a full online course at the HB Live Online Academy, which takes this whole thing to the next level. So look out for that. Excellent. What are you adding now? Right now, this is a special trick that I'm doing. This is the volume lift uh, spray. This is going to give me control and movement to the hair. It's gonna be a little wet because it's something that you normally apply on wet hair, but I'm applying from distance. That way I'm re-wetting the hair a little bit and that gives me enough grip to manipulate the hair and create it more grungy instead of creating something more soft. It kind of breaks it down, like you kind of blow it out a bit and then you revert it a little bit with product. Yeah, it's yeah. like uh, constructing and deconstructing something. Let's show that to the camera. People are wondering exactly which product it is, so we get a good clean shot there. And then after you have that, you manipulate the hair and it start drying really fast. You can either go back with the, um, with the blow dryer, no nozzle, and then get that really nice. Again, another thing for me, you know, all these little things that I was influenced by with TG, the, the styling and the finishing, you know, that again, it just seems so effortless. That idea of power drying, using the round brush just where needed, and then like converting it with product. Something I remember seeing like Anthony and Stoller doing. Going, I think when they created Bedhead. Yeah, that was, that that was the whole idea. idea. Yeah. And it, it's even more relevant today than ever. So that kind of created a revolution in styling, yeah. where overdone hair just is overdone. You know, but like, I think it's uh, Eugene Suleiman who has that term, undone, well done, yes. which I love. <laughs> undone, well done. It just doesn't mean you ignored it, but look how much work went into making this look so polished and undone. So now right shampoo from Philly Right. And as you see, I go with the phone dryer, so then I can get inside, you know, the roots create that little grip. Let's show that to the camera. This is a revitalizing dry shampoo from TG Copyright. So it's very soft, but um, powerful at the same time. So this is to give the final look to the hair. Now I'm going to be working that fringe for that. I'm going to be using the comb just to give that really nice direction to the hair. 
Lots of, lots of questions coming in about upcoming classes. Where will you be? Will you be in Boston? Are you ever coming to Texas? Are you going to Orlando? If people want to follow you and, and see where they can take classes with you, should they go to your Instagram? Well, thank you. I feel honored by all of you guys. So uh, thanks for that. Um, yes, I'm at the Academy a couple of times a year. If you follow me on Instagram, shoot me a message. I can send you more information about it. And I can post more, more information on the comments after we finish the I'm going to put your handle for Instagram here. It's at Joel Torres Style. Joel Torres. Is that two R's? Two R's. Two Torres. And there's two S. Yeah. Style. And then, yes, I can answer more questions for sure. But also something um, that I can say is we have classes every two weeks at the New York Academy. We also have an academy in Dallas. That's the one that I... Uh, most of the time, and um, and I have another class in Detroit area. This is going to be more in social media. Uh, we're going to talk about photography with a cell phone, with a semi-pro camera. We're going to talk about lights. For that, yeah, I have. Let's the talk link. about that a little bit now, because I mean, obviously, you're a super talented craft hairdresser, but that's sometimes not enough these days. You, you've been creating a lot of content, a lot of videos. How did you learn how to do that? Because I think a lot of people are intimidated. Well, I was hanging out in the same thing, the same thing I did with, when I started with TJ. I started hanging out with friends that they were photographers, just helping them. And then from there, they asked me to do hair for models and stuff. Then from there, I wanted to learn how to take a better picture. So I bought a semi-pro camera more than uh, probably like 15 years ago. And I started taking my own photography. By that time, it was more in MySpace and Facebook. Um, and then, you know, with experience, you learn a lot about light. And yeah, it's like, I think uh, it's my second passion, photography. So I've been learning that, and now I want to give back to the community because I know that everybody wants to get better on taking their own pictures because competition is getting stronger right there. So Brian Adelman, who did the color, just tuned in. This says, Amazing. looks great, another great, um, Another great collaboration. I'm going to ask him to share the formula here because so many people have been asking about the formulas for the gray and the pink and the process. We'd love to hear so it. beautiful. You can see those pink here and there. So it, it looks definitely like he did it on purpose to create like highlights. She loves it. I love it. <laughs> so so again, the, the beautiful hybrid cut here from our good friend Joel Torres, creative director for TG on his beautiful model. Uh, Vimala, I got it right again. Yeah, give us the old twist around. Again, if you guys missed any of this and you're just tuning in on the end, shame on you, but no. Actually, you can go back and watch us at any time here on Hairbrain's Facebook page. The video is saved forever in our video section. You can fast forward, you can rewind. And if you have more questions for Joel, Joel, you can just tag him here. Or you can follow him at Joel Torres Style on Instagram. I know we'd love to connect with you. Thanks again, guys. Thank you so much, Joel, for this incredible lesson. I learned so much. Thank you. Thanks, Brian, for the incredible color. Peace out, guys. We'll see you again real soon.